Hello there, this is Alana Tucky, and I've received a question about this problem, which is 11.5, number one, from my math lab. So let's look over how to do it. Let me click on view an example. So we have a researcher wanted to determine the effectiveness of a new cream in the treatment of warts. She identified 144 individuals who had two warts. She applied cream A on one wart and cream B on the second wart. Test whether the proportion of successes with cream A is different from cream B at the 0.01 level of significance. Okay, so first of all, you have to know what kind of test this is, which is, you're talking about proportions, right? So two different proportions, proportion A and proportion B. So proportion for cream A, proportion for cream B. And they're dependent because it's one group of people that are beginning both treatments, right? So that's a dependent sample proportion test, which would be, let's see, not there, there, that one right here. Okay, so first thing you have to do is determine your null and alternative hypothesis, which would be that the proportions for the two creams are the same or that they differ. So I wrote that right here. The proportion of successes for cream A and cream B are equal. In other words, PA is equal to PB. And the proportions for, of successes for cream A and B differ. They're not the same. And your alpha is 0.01. That's set up in the problem. Then you need your test statistic, which is Z0 is F12 minus F21 minus 1 over the square root of F12 plus F21. Now remember, F12 is in the top right corner. F21 is in the bottom left corner. So if we look at our problem, F12 is 8 and F21 is 20. So let me bring up the calculation here. There it is. I already did this. Okay, so you take... 8 take away 20, and then take the absolute value of that, so that's negative 12, and then you take the absolute value, it's positive 12. 12 take away 1 is 11, so 11 divided by the square root of 28 is 2.0788 if you do it with a calculator. Let me show you, 11 divided by the square root of 28. There you go. Okay, so that's step 3. Step 4 we need to draw a picture. And we're gonna actually do both the classical and the p-value approach and find them both ways just for the heck of it. Okay, so if I'm gonna do the classical approach, alpha is 0.01, alpha over two is 0 0.005, and then you would use the bottom row of the t-table to find these two values, or you could use your calculator, so let me show you. So if you take your t-table, I gotta get to it, there it is. You go to the point zero zero five column, and since we're running this on a Z distribution, a standard normal distribution, you're gonna use 2.576. So there's the one on the right, the one on the left is the same but negative. If you're gonna use your calculator to find that value, you'd use second inverse norm, point zero zero five, enter, zero, enter, one, enter, there you go. Enter, and there it is, there's the negative one right there. And in case anybody's really interested, you can also do it with stat crunch. Let me show you. So you go to stat calculators, pick the normal calculator, and you want this area to be 0 0.005, enter. And there's 2.576. Okay, so there's the critical values for that method. Um, oops, see, wrong one, there it is. Okay, now what about the p-value? How could you find the p-value? Well, the p-value is the area in the two tails if you have a z0 value of 2.0788, so I need the two tails put together. Now what you can do is you can find the white center and take it away from one because the entire curve makes one. So I have it typed up right here, but let me show you how to do that with the calculator. So you, you go normal CDF, oopsie, I just prepped the wrong thing, hold on, quit. Now remember, we learned how to do this way back in chapter 7. This is the same stuff we did back then. It's just, it's been a while, so you might not remember it. But you're finding the area under normal curve just like then. So 2.0788, enter, 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 enter. And there you get 0.96236. Then you take 1 minus that answer. And there you have 0 0.0376. So that's why I put the p-value right there as 0 0.0376. With stat crunch, it'd be the same thing. You'd click on between to make it a between problem. You'd say negative 2.0788 and positive 2.078 and press enter. And there's the same number that the calculator came up with and you do one minus that. All right, so that's that. 
We've done step four, both methods. Step five would be a decision. Well, remember you reject, let's think about the classical approach first. You reject if your test statistic, which is 2.0788 is in the dark tail, right? Is it out there past the critical region or critical value? which the answer is no, it's not. So you're not going to reject the null hypothesis because 2.0788 is in this white region right here, which is not the rejection region. And alternatively, you can see it with the p-value method. The p-value is 0 0.0376, and we always reject if our p-value is low. And our p-value is not low enough. Our alpha is 0 0.01, so we're not going to reject. And that's what I typed up right here. So you do not reject because your p-value is greater than your alpha. That's the easier way to think of it. Or you don't reject because your test statistic 2.0788 is not greater than your upper critical value or lower than your lower critical value, but we don't care about that because it's not negative on this one. And since we're not rejecting the null hypothesis, that means there is not enough evidence to support the claim that cream A has a different proportion of success with treating warts than cream B. And we're done. All right, so let's double check that with the thing, my math lab. So there they have that all this work is just to get the test statistic. There's 2.08, just like we had. And then they rounded the p-value to 0 0.038. That's fine. We said 376, which would round. And since that's greater than 0 0.01, we do not reject. So it's looking good. And then we wrote a conclusion. All right, so everything's set. I hope that helps with that problem. I'll see you back here for more videos.